Right, so the heading is applications of differentiating logs. Uh, log functions, what we had a look at yesterday. Please help me remember if you differentiate the just the stock standard natural log of x, what's our answer? Uh, and you're the next step. Yeah, you're, you're going more complicated. This is just regular x. Go ahead, sorry. Okay, this is log base e, but when I differentiate that, what do I get? It's an old familiar function. Go ahead. 1 over x. Thank you. Okay. Alicia's like, I've nailed this. It's so in there. Okay, now, we can go a little more specifically because as you might recall, 1 over x, this graph, um, very, very roughly, you know, it looks like this. But this is a problem because I don't actually want all of that graph as the derivative of this. Which part do I really want? Upper right. I want the part on the right hand side, yeah? Because this part over here is the part that is relevant to the log curve. Log curve doesn't exist for x is less than zero. So I actually need to add something on here. Do you remember what I need to include? I'll give you a clue. It starts with a curly brace. For x is greater than zero. And that's the domain as sorry, is it? Excellent. Okay. Now I'll get to the spot Tyler was at. He was like three steps ahead. That's okay. When you take something which isn't just log x, if you differentiate something like log the function of x, something else, something more complicated, like you could chuck an x squared in there, or you could chuck a trig function, whatever you like, right? What did we get? It was a um, it was a fraction just like the other one. Come on, Tyler. I don't, I know you know it. Go for it. Very good. F dash x on fx. Now I didn't make as big a deal about it because you learned a whole bunch of new concepts yesterday. But um, see this. See how we're saying x is greater than zero for this. Well, doesn't that imply we might have a similar issue over here? We're also going to have a domain restriction. Have a think. What domain restriction might make sense? Hmm. Okay. Let me just leave that blank for a second. If you haven't already, open your laptop up, get Desmos out, and let's um let's just do a quick example. Okay, so here's an example. Let's think about the answer algebraically first, because you can just use this rule, and then we'll use Desmos to help us interpret like what should we put in here. Okay, so firstly, f dash on f. Excuse me, in this context, what's f? It's right there. I've written it. Just read it out. It's x squared minus 4. That's the inside function. So I'm just going to chuck that on the denominator. No changes required. On the top, in this case, f dash is just 2x. Excellent. OK, fantastic. Now, go ahead. In Desmos, I want you to give me two graphs. And you can put them on top of each other. Go ahead and graph this original function, log of x squared minus 4. And then I also want you to graph this guy. Can you do that for me? Log of x squared minus 4. Do I have to and then I'd love you to graph the part that you think its derivative should take. What are you looking at? Well, I've got, um, I've got two graphs here. One's green, one's purple. And you've got the same ones in front of you. Which one is this one? Which one of the graphs is this one? Uh, is, the purple. Purple. Is, is it? Nice one. It's the green one, right? Let me go and hide. There you go. So there's my log of x squared minus 4. Now, before we leave the discussion of this, I want you to notice the log of x squared minus 4 is doing something weird that regular log doesn't do. Here's regular log, right? Here's the regular log curve. Log of x squared minus 4, it's got two bits. Do you notice that? Have a look closely. Why does it have two bits? It's doing all the negative problems. It's getting negative values. Hold on, I thought we said you're not allowed to take logs of negative numbers. How come this one can? Oh, oh! Those are fighting words from someone who wasn't here yesterday and didn't learn this stuff. I'll just pretend I didn't hear that. Uh, in fact, Zachy was correct. Zachy, can you say that again one more time for everyone? Because there's a square. Okay, so if you take a negative number and put it in here. That negative number gets squared out if it's big enough. For example, if you put in negative 3 here, right? Negative 3 all squared, what is it? 
Negative it's nine. negative three, all squared. It's nine, take away four. That's five, positive number, all good. Okay. So, shh, thanks you, 12. So for that reason, when you take this and then you compare it to its derivative. So now we've got this guy. Mine's purple, yours might be blue or red or something like that, okay? It's got a problem. What's the problem? Have a look. Have a look at it closely. You've got it in front of you, right? It doesn't have the domain, right? It's not, it's not domain correctly. Okay, just hold on a second. Year 12. Year 12. I'm just hitting pause because this is hard. This is hard stuff. I will promise you, I'll put money on the table in two months. Yeah, two months. Some of you will ask this question. You want to know the answer because you can't work it out yourself. We're telling you now. Do you remember what I told you about memory? Do you remember that lesson in memory I gave you? Does anyone remember the quote? Memory is the residue of what? It's what's left behind when you think about something. Memory is the residue of thought. I can tell you right now, because I can see it on your faces, what you're thinking about. And for like 50% of you, it's this. For the other 50% of you, it's not. You're not going to remember this. You're not going to learn it. Now, I'm actually kind of okay with that, so long as you are. But I don't know that you are. So can we try this again? What do you think, you two of? Wow, like a non-response. You really that? Okay, let's try this. Are we ready to try this again? Yeah. That's better. Thank you. Okay. Now what we compared was this guy and this guy. Have a look at it on Desmos, right? Yep. This is the weird wiggly one. It sort of has this like weird S-bend looking thing in the middle, right? Yep. We don't want that part. It shouldn't exist. This doesn't exist there, so the derivative also shouldn't exist there. Here's what we need to say. That part that you have on the inside of your log, that's got to be greater than zero, just like this. In this case here, it would be x squared minus 4 being greater than zero. Not going to do this as a, as a full lesson for you. You can put it in if you like. I actually don't know what Desmos will do with this, but I can tell you what this is equivalent to is x is less than negative 2, x is greater than positive 2. And that, sure enough, is the actual part of the graph that exists for the original.